Hello class, this is a little video to help you with your null hypothesis assignment. The null hypothesis really gets at the essence of quantitative research. And this type of research in the broadest definition is really a way of thinking or a state of mind. And probably the most essential thing is to understand the null hypothesis or the fact that we're asking an honest question. So when we think of our state of mind and you start approaching choosing your research topic, if you choose quantitative research, then you really need to gear your mind towards hypothetical thinking. There are two other modes of inquiry that we want to actually avoid when we're designing a quantitative study. One is phenomenological. While this is a beautiful qualitative methodology, phenomenology has to do with an internalized belief, in which case no empirical proof is necessary. The other type of thinking is assumptive. This one is very problematic. This is when you really want to prove something. And it hasn't come up a lot in the text, but the idea of using the word prove is frowned upon. We really don't use the word prove when we talk about research, particularly in the social sciences. So what we want you to do is form a hypothesis and base the conclusion upon evidence. One of the ways we can do that is by really seeking an answer to an important question rather than trying to find a way to prove a belief you already have. And most of us have some pretty strong beliefs about what is effective teaching from our own personal experiences in the classroom. So we have to move from that mindset to the mindset of, I wonder whether. The null hypothesis states that there's no difference or relationship between two variables being studied. It also means that the results are due to chance and are not significant in terms of supporting the idea being investigated. So it's easy to find a difference that can look like six to eight, but what we realize is this could just be occurring by chance alone. And is this really significant statistically? Even then, we have to ask ourselves when we find a statistical difference, whether or not that difference was practical. Again, it's impossible to prove. The hypothesis can only be rejected or not rejected statistically. And as a reminder, you are hoping to reject your null hypothesis. Null, by the way, is an old way of saying zero. So the null hypothesis is really assuming that your population is going to have uh, zero differences between the two groups. Uh, what is Statistically significant mean, the brief video gave you a little bit of help on this. What it really means, and we generally in music set our alpha level 0.05 for our probability, which means the results would be expected to occur on the basis of chance alone only five times in 100. As you've been reading your research, you may have found these P levels, probability levels at less than 0.05 or even less than 0.01 and on some occasions less than 0.001. When we think about medical research and you find a statistically significant level of 0.01, that's probably not uh, conservative enough because that means if you're testing a new drug that perhaps the fatality could be 0.01, well, that's one person in 100, and we don't feel very good about that level, uh, which is why we would move into even more conservative ranges, just as an example. Okay, having given you that framework, let's just practice stating the null hypothesis. Some people like to think of the null hypothesis as the opposite. So is an individual's personality a factor in the magnitude of stage fright? So if we think that personality might be a factor, what we want to state is that in fact, no, there will be no significant difference between individual's personality type and the magnitude of stage fright experienced. Do you see? Um, you could say that the individual's personality does not impact the magnitude of, fright, of stage fright. That could be another way to state it. But usually we're trying to look between two variables or two populations, which is why this statement is probably the most accurate. There will be no significant difference between individuals' personality type. Okay. 
Here's another question. Is there a relationship between reading skills and the ability to sight read music? So we have two variables here. We have between reading skills and the ability to sight read music. So in this case, our null, hypothes null hypothesis would say there's no relationship between literacy and the ability to sight read music. Then when we did our study, we would hope to reject this and find that indeed there is a relationship between these two things. So I hope this was a little bit helpful. On to your next practice assignment, and I will be giving you feedback.